Hello, Grade Twelves. Welcome back from the ad break. It's economics with Miss Piwe, and today we're looking at the dynamics of a perfect market. And just before the ad break, we were looking at the characteristics of perfect competition, and then we started with our first one over there, uh, which is the large number of buyers and sellers, um, and because the fact that price will not be determined by one um, participant, but by the forces of supply and demand. So just do remember that point. Moving right along, so when there are many sellers, the share of each seller in the market is so small that the seller cannot influence the price. Okay, So the fact the number of sellers in the market does play an important role in order to condition this particular market. So the fact that we have many sellers um, in this market, it means that the pie gets smaller and smaller because, and then you end up with just a little piece. Uh, and then with that little piece that you have, you can't actually influence the price because it is not big enough uh, to allow you to actually influence the price in this particular uh, market. So that is done in, uh, intentionally uh, not to allow um, sellers to have um, this authority or this power in order to influence the price um, in this particular market. So this is actually a very important um, factor that we need to remember because it does um, allow us to have a further understanding of what perfect competition is all about. So when there are many sellers, it means that the share of each seller is so small that the seller cannot um, influence the price. So also do remember um, that point. So sellers are price takers. They accept the prevailing market price. If they increase prices above the market price, they will lose customers. Okay. So I explained earlier on what price takers are. So you take the price as it is, as it is determined uh, by the forces of supply and demand. And then if you try to increase your price above the one that is offered in the market, then you are going to lose um, customers because there are um, other sellers um, in this particular market and then customers will just simply leave um, your, your business or buying from your business and then they will move on and, and buy from um, the other sellers because they will be selling their products at the market related price, not the one that has been increased uh, by one particular participant or supplier. So if you try and increase the prices and your prices are above the market price and then you will end up losing customers, okay? All right, so some interesting points that we've just mentioned. So now it's time to move on to our next factor. The point um, that um, all products need to be homogeneous. So in other words, all products need to be identical. So you can't have a seller that is selling a slightly different product than that of other sellers or of that um, of other competitors. So that is not permitted in this market um, space. So we must actually ensure that all products are identical because if your product is slightly different, it means that you have a, a, an influence of uh, persuading other customers to come and buy your product because the features of your product are slightly different uh, to those of your competitors. So that is not allowed in this market space. So all products need to be identical and that is one of the requirements in terms of perfect competition. So products must be identical. Uh, identical. Um, there should be no differences in style, design and quality. Okay, so I've just mentioned this, that you can't just have a, a slightly different uh, product um, in this particular market. So all products need to be identi um, identical and you can't style yours differently or use a different design or make sure that the quality is different from that of your competitors. So it is not allowed in this market. In this way, products compete solely based on price and can be purchased anyway because products are the same, you're not going to drive from Joburg to Pretoria to purchase a product that you can buy in Joburg at the same price. And it's exactly the same in terms of design, quality and style. So it's not really worth it. But if, if the product in Pretoria was slightly different in terms of quality and style, then that 
one that is available or offered in Johannesburg, then that might be a motivation for you to actually take that drive and go and purchase that uh, product. So it surely, it solely needs to be based on price and it can be purchased anywhere because it's the same and there's nothing different um, in terms of what's been offered here and what has been offered elsewhere. Then all factors of production are mobile, okay, so they are movable, so you can move the factors of production, so they can move freely between markets. Um, in reality, there are few perfect markets, however, there are some sectors such as mining, for example, gold, and agriculture, for example, maize, where many of the conditions are met, okay? So these are some of the industries where you are most likely uh, to find uh, perfect competition. So if you look at the mining sector or the mining industry, or if you're looking at the world of agriculture, it is possible that you could come across um, some of these conditions of perfect competition. But it's something that's not uh, quite common in economics or in the, um, international trade or world economics. But in some sectors, it does exist. You do find um, certain conditions of perfect competition. These sectors illustrate the way in which the market mechanism works. Okay, so if you look at the mining industry, if you look at the agricultural um, industry, those two sectors actually illustrate how the market mechanism work because those two industries or sectors are driven by supply and demand. So price is determined by the forces of supply and demand and there isn't an individual participant um, that influences the price of gold or the price of maize. So it's all based on the forces of supply and demand. And as a result of that, we can happily say that the conditions of perfect competition are met in these two industries that we have just mentioned. So now let's have a look at uh, buyers and sellers, um, the fact that they need to have access to full information on knowledge about the product and the market itself. Because we said no participant is allowed to come into the into this market space uh, with an added on advantage or with a competitive advantage. In other words, you know, they, they have additional information that they've acquired somewhere else. And then this additional information will actually give them a, a competitive advantage um, in terms of um, market sales and so on. So all buyers and sellers must be fully aware of what is happening in any part of the market okay so they need to be provided with knowledge and information so they need to be fully aware of what is happening in any part of the market so um, information needs to be made available and it needs to be easily accessible to all buyers and sellers it shouldn't be a mission uh, to um, get this information or to acquire this information it should be readily made available so that everyone could have access to this information so that this is one of the requirements of uh, perfect competition technology has increased competition as information is easily obtained via the internet. Okay, so we know that technology has helped us so much and also just as consumers because now we can Google information, uh, we can look up products, we can compare pricing, uh, we can see what uh, people are, pray, are, are, are paying elsewhere and then we can see if we've been charged a, a fairly reasonable price. So technology has played an important role in terms of the increased competition um, that we now see because information is easily obtained via the internet. And you know that, that uh, when you want to buy a product, you can easily look it up um, on the internet and get all the information that you need. And then now we come to the next point when we look at the collusion uh, between sellers. Um, in this particular market, it does not occur. Collusion occurs when buyers and sellers make an agreement to limit competition. In a perfect market, no collusion takes place because remember, the buyers and sellers do not influence the price. So you can't actually meet uh, and discuss and fix the prices. Um, that is not allowed. 
uh, because you know that that has happened. Uh, we've seen that uh, with a, a company that I'm not going to mention uh, when they were involved in a price fixing scandal and they had to pay a huge um, fine. The cell phone companies have been um, investigated in this regard uh, that they've tried to limit the competition into that particular space and therefore they'd come to an agreement uh, to fix the prices um, in that market in order to limit the competition uh, because if a new competitor comes into the market space um, that will upset um, their customer base and also their profit margins as well. So there's no collusion in this particular market uh, because uh, you can't have an agreement um, to limit competition. So buyers and sellers can't make an agreement to uh, limit, um, per, um, limit competition uh, because in a perfect market there is no um, collusion. So collusion cannot take place um, in a perfect market. Okay, um, moving on to our next point. So buyers and sellers base their actions solely on price. Um, homogeneous products uh, fetch the same price and therefore no preference is shown for buying from or selling to any particular person. Okay, so the fact that you know the price is the same and that the buyers and the sellers are all involved in buying and selling an, an identical um, product or a homogeneous product. So really, I mean, there isn't, you know, a particular uh, preference that is shown uh, for buying or from selling uh, to any particular person uh, because here it's more like a generic um, market. It doesn't really matter where you purchase your product from. Um, the quality will be the same and the price will also be the same. So it is rather pointless to go to all the trouble um, of driving, you know, um, 50 kilometers to go and purchase a product when you can buy it a, a kilometer away. So there is no particular preference um, that is given to any of the buyers and sellers in this market. So it does really make it an ideal situation uh, where people could come in and out as they please and there are no barriers if you want to exit the market you can um, happily do so so there aren't any restrictions in, in, in this particular market. So what about government intervention? I think when we study economics we always have to look at government intervention because there are instances where government intervention is good and then also there are instances where you know we can do without um, government um, intervention. So um, is it possible in this market space? Well, it's not. So there is no government intervention in perfect competition or in a perfect market. So buyers must be free to buy whatever they want from any firm in any quantity. Okay. So there is that freedom to buy whatever, the, whatever you want to purchase and also you can buy it at any quantity. So there aren't limits. We know that earlier on in our previous lesson when we looked at um, the issue of uh, protection or protectionism, uh, we did see that government could put in um, certain measures in place um, in terms of imports. Um, the quantity that you, you are allowed to import from another country um, could be limited in order to promote and support local suppliers. So in this particular instance, there is no um, interference from the government and buyers are free to buy um, wherever they want to buy or whatever they want to buy and, and in any quantity um, that they may wish to purchase. Moving on, um, sellers must be free to sell what, how much and where they wish. Okay, So they can sell whatever they want uh, whatever quantity and also they can sell sell wherever they wish um, to sell their products. So there is freedom in terms of movement um, in this particular market and you aren't restricted to a particular area um, because when there is government intervention, government could say, you know, these, this is your market space and you can't explore um, this market because you need A, B and C in order to enter that market space. But here we seem to have, you know, 
free movement, people are allowed to sell whatever they want to sell uh, at the quantity that they wish to sell and wherever they want to sell. So there aren't um, restrictions in terms of where they can be based, what they can sell and the quantity um, that they can also sell. So um, that's a good thing about this uh, particular market. There should be no state interference and no price control. So government cannot control or influence the price because the price here is determined by the forces of supply and demand. And also there should be no state interference. So government should not interfere in a perfect competition or in a perfect market because forces of demand and supply uh, play the part of determining the prices. So government can't actually have uh, control over the price itself. And, and I, I'm sure government will not be pleased uh, with this uh, particular point, but this is what you know the reality of this perfect competition um, is all about. The fact that there's freedom and there's uh, basically no interference uh, from the government. Buyers should not form groups to obtain lower prices, nor should sellers combine to enforce um, higher prices. Okay, this I quite like, I must say, um, that as buyers you can't say, well, we will buy um, at, at, at large quantities in order to lower the price. Because, you know, um, in an imperfect market that um, sometimes occur, where buyers will then form groups and they will purchase um, goods and services in, in larger quantities, and in so doing, then they lower the price. Uh, but in the perfect competition, you can't do that. Even sellers can't combine to enforce um, higher prices because we said they can't form agreements in terms of an, in terms of influencing price. So this is not allowed in this uh, market where sellers combine to enforce higher prices and also buyers can't say, okay, let's form a group, let's go and purchase this in, in huge amounts of quantity and um, so that we can try and lower the price. So that will not work in this particular environment. Okay, so those are the interesting factors that you need to be aware of and that you need to remember when approaching your exam or your class test. Um, they are important because they do um, give you a bit of information with regards to what uh, perfect competition is all about. So what we're going to do right now, we're going to take a short break and I will see you right after this.